Hello everyone, Jack here. Welcome to a recap of the 7th episode of Final Space Season 3. The Chamber of Doubt ramps up the season as there is a pivotal event in this episode that kicks off the second half in a darker mood in an already dark season. So the episode itself is about the team squad entering the mind of Bolo to free him from himself. You see, after Bolo's fight with Oreskes in the Ventrexian, he received a wound that has been poisoning his mind with Invictus ever since. The Gatekeeper, a flame spirit that lives inside Bolo's mind, comes to the Galaxy 2 to enlist the team squad into freeing Bolo. Through some mumbo jumbo, the Galaxy 2 light folds into Bolo's mind, where we see the madness gripping him through the personification of crazy Bolo's running around in his head. Ash, who just reunited with the crew after plunging into a black hole and all the moments lost, mysteriously goes missing. It turns out that she was ripped out of Lightfold by an apparition of Bolo that turns out to be Invictus. Bolo takes Ash to a place in his mind called the Chamber of Doubt, where he tells her that she has to help him regain his sanity. But it turns out to be a trap, as Invictus plans to manipulate Ash into joining him. He uses Ash's brother Fox as a puppet to trick her. Uncertain over whether Fox is actually himself, Ash asks him to tell a particular story. Having access to all of Fox's memories, Invictus relays the sad story of how Fox was once a musician, but the Tribulians cut one of his arms off and attached a minigun to it so that he could be more effective in the war against the Ventrexians. Invictus uses Fox's story to manipulate Ash like how Lord Commander did to Avocado in flashbacks in the Ventrexian, arguing that creatures are stupid and only do pointless things like everlasting wars. By this point, Gary has been filled in by the real Bolo that Invictus is trying to manipulate Ash and rushes to the scene. He is the only one from the Galaxy 2 to jump down and intervene. Instead of shooting Fox with his laser, he pushes Ash away from the possessed puppet, and the Gary and Fox engage in a minor scuffle. Invictus uses his closeness to Gary to use him too like a puppet. He takes control of Gary's robotic arm and configures it into a sword to plunge into Fox, ending him. Although the action was Invictus's doing, Ash seems to blame Gary for the disaster, as he could not fight Invictus off. Thus, Invictus accomplished what he set out to do, create doubt in Ash's mind about Gary. You may be wondering why Invictus didn't just kill Gary right then and there. Well, Gary really isn't a threat to him. Like Invictus said before, Gary is merely a simpleton. It's really his allies, Mooncake, Bolo, and Ash that pose any sort of legitimate concern for him. It's far more worthwhile for Invictus to use Gary as a pawn to regain Ash to his side. Even though it was clearly very heavy-handed as the fight was essentially choreographed by Invictus to serve his ends. He even had Fox not even strike Gary to make it look like Gary was the aggressor. And his goal is to make Ash eventually see Fox's death as evidence of the foolhardiness of sticking with Gary, as he is powerless to protect his friends. Even though the obvious reaction is to blame Invictus for the confrontation, Ash is so torn at this point that the loss of Fox is clearly going to unhinge her, and it loses another connection to the team squad. After Fox's demise, we see a scene from Gary, where he smashes a cookie machine, showing him at his lowest low. Even though Fox's death wasn't his fault, he clearly blames himself for the loss. Although he thought he was doing the right thing by pushing Ash away from Fox instead of shooting him with his laser, his seemingly cautious action allowed him to be close enough that Invictus could use him like a tool. Invictus is trying to create doubt in Ash's mind about her friends, and he accomplishes this in the episode. Because if you can't trust your friends, then whom can you trust? There are two characters facing the major changes that happened to them last week, Ash and Quinn. With Ash's transformation into an adult, you really have to wonder if this Ash is the same Ash. And when she says that she is working things out with Invictus, you really have to wonder if she is with the team squad at this point. As well, the loss of Fox is certainly going to put a damper on her relationship with Gary. With Quinn, she is having a sort of identity crisis, as she wonders whether she will turn into Nightfall or remain who she is. Does she have any choice in the matter? She wants to be Quinn, but is her path predetermined for her already? Going back to Fox, I was skeptical of his death, considering that it occurred inside Bolo's mind. But when Bolo pulled his body out of thin air, it was pretty clear that Fox is physically gone, even though he was mentally gone when Invictus possessed him. So we got a send off for his character, where we got a flashback so that we could learn a little about him and sympathize with him before he bit the bullet. If you ever watched a Red Naruto, this trope happened all the time in that series. It's basically a way to add another layer to the character's death, and thus we have the first major character death of the season, and it may be the one that tears the crew apart. Alright everyone, let us know your thoughts on the Chamber of Doubt in the comments section down below. What do you think Ash will do after the events of this episode? Will the team squad try to avenge Fox's death? And will you miss having Fox around? This is Jack turning off the TV. As always, have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.